Namaste, friends and family, soul tribe, Venus lovers, you guys. How is everybody doing? This is Dr. Danny. I am feeling fantastic. We have some amazing energies coming that I need to share with you and to talk about. The big uh, conjunction of the year is Jupiter conjunct Uranus, okay? Now, if you practice tropical astrology, this is going to be in Taurus. If you practice constellational astrology, it's right at the very last degrees of Aries. doesn't make that much of a difference, but there's a little bit of subtlety, so I'll go into that in a little bit. Um and then just a few quick announcements for you guys, and then we'll get into the astrology. And then what I want to do after that is take you through this conjunction in the houses that are tr that that they're transiting through on your natal chart. So what you'll need, and I'll show you how to do this when we get to that point, is to get a copy of your natal chart <clears throat> and see where, if it's tropical, where Taurus, the conjunction is happening, what house that is in for you. Or if you're constellational, where the cusp of Aries and Taurus is for you. It should be the same house. It just depends on which map you're using, okay? So once you know what that house is, then you should be able to click on the timestamps below and go right to your house. And it's just a quick read on what might be happening for you, what area of your life this conjunction is going to affect. Um, it can also apply to the house that Uranus and or Jupiter are in, right, are, are in, in your natal chart. So for example, <clears throat> I have Uranus in Virgo in my constellational chart, and I have Jupiter in my Aquarius in my constellational chart. That corresponds to house five and 10. So you can also look at house five and 10 for me if you wanted to read how that energy was going to affect me. Now, currently in the sky where they are right now, they're transiting through my 12th house on my natal chart. So I will show you guys how to do that, but just so you know, you can click down there and check out the quick reads. Um, Let's see. A new class is coming out next Tuesday, April 23rd at 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time. I'm going to take you guys through the alchemy, the astrological alchemy of Pluto. This will be a live class that will be recorded and placed on my course website. So if you can't join us for the live, you can still enroll in the course. It's going to be phenomenal. We're probably going to spend at least two hours. We're going to go through Pluto, through all the houses. I'm going to give you the correct constellational transit dates of Pluto. And we're also going to uh, use the lead into gold energy that Pluto has for us. So you guys can not be so afraid of Pluto to actually use it for conscious transformation in your life and in your stars. So with that, I guess, yeah, let me share my screen and we'll see what we're looking at. <clears throat> Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you're lurking. <clears throat> let me know if you like what you're seeing. <clears throat> All right, this right here is the map, time map of the energies coming for us in April. And particularly what I want to touch on today is the Conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus. It perfects on the 20th here. Okay. And this past week, you guys might have been feeling a little bit held back by this Mars Saturn conjunction. These two actually, um, they work well together, except when Mars is overly enthusiastic. Is it's like stepping on the gas and the brakes at the same time. So there's this energy of building, of wanting to do something, wanting to be set free so that you can uh, take your inspired action. This has been waning off over the weekend. They're still close, but I think once Mars enters into Pisces during this bigger transit of Jupiter and Uranus conjunct, then we'll be uh, feeling a little bit more free, a little bit more guided to take the action that's necessary. Mars also sextiles Uranus and Jupiter during this conjunction. So if you weren't feeling the kick in the pants to get moving, this is what's going to do that for you, okay? So basically, the conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus is between the 14th and the 24th. That's when we're going to feel everything. And this whole next week, we're going to have a swelling new moon, a swelling moon filling, filling up to the full moon on the 23rd, and then Mercury will go direct. And then Mars conjuncts uh, Neptune a little bit later on. So you're going to feel this surge of energy building over the next week. And the, the biggest theme of it is this Jupiter and Uranus conjunction because the sun enters the constellation of Aries on the 21st. Yes, I know you all think it's in Taurus and that's okay. <laughs> this is the constellation, not the sign. Okay. And then we also have sun square Pluto. So this conjunction is why I'm doing the Pluto class on the 23rd, because we're going to be feeling a little bit of Plutonian energy over the weekend. And it might be nagging at you. It might be something that you feel in your subconscious. And by taking this class, you guys might be able to bring it into your consciousness. So that's the purpose of this class. Um, okay. 
So let's take a look at the actual chart here real quick, and we'll talk about this energy. I just wanted you all to see the time map so you could get a reference point on the dates that we're actually working with. All right, here is the constellational chart. Um, so what you're going to see is a little bit different than if you were to look at a tropical zodiac wheel. They've got the uh, sun over here and they've got Jupiter and Taurus over here. But the signs do not actually correlate with the constellations. I like reading the sky. So we are reading the sky right now. So what do we have here? We've got um, Jupiter and Uranus. Jupiter is the expander. It's the planet of luck, abundance, faith wisdom, spirituality. It brings us all together under a common cause, a common belief system, or a common mythology. Uranus, on the other hand, is more focused on shaking up the status quo. It's about metamorphosis. It's about <clears throat> the path of individuality. So Uranus is your key in this particular incarnation for what your unique individual expression of spirit is going to be. OK, no one else is going to be like you. No one else is going to have the same exact Uranus energy that you are going to have. OK, so what is it about you that is unique and wonderful? And what is it about you that is swelling up and wanting to be expressed, wanting to expand and wanting to be grounded in faith and abundance? That's the question we need to ask ourselves during this transit. So I think one of the biggest things that we need to do is basically take a look at where these are in your houses. So um, when you take this energy together, this is, this is a faith and an expansion in the metamorphosis of the self. This is what this feels like to me. As Uranus has been transiting through Aries, we have been got, getting a lot of very strange and unique expressions of self, have we not? You know, I am now identifying as, so to speak. In fact, when this transit began, 2018-ish, uh, that is when I started to feel the call to become something other than a doctor in my professional life. I wanted to begin to offer a spiritual service. OK, so for me, this is very synchronous, the way this energy is coming. And each of us have our own unique and individual journeys. The hard part about these individual journeys, about being a trailblazer and what we're doing, is that there isn't anyone to sort of look left and right and go, am I doing this right? Is this OK? You know, so so Jupiter brings in that faith and that trust in our ability to do that without needing the uh, reassurance from the collective, so to speak. OK, so. um before I get into the houses and before I show you guys how to work with your own house energy, depending on where this particular conjunction is for you, let me, um, I just want to show you a few examples of my, my unique expression. You know, you guys just see me as this person talking. I've told you that I teach classes. I told you that I do readings and I told you that I'm a physician. Um, but but what, what does the rest of my life look like? You know, I am I am a whole person and I do have a very interesting and fascinating life. And so I just wanted to show you just a few slides so that you guys would get an idea of what my individual unique expression is. And then I will read your house energies for you. This right here is a couple that has been together for 26 years, starting in January so or in June. June 6th is our anniversary. We'll be 26 years old, me and this guy right here. And this was our wedding day, June 6th, 1998. And he is still here, still with me, still supporting me, still one of the most amazing people in my life. I can't say enough about how much I love this guy. That dress I was wearing is my mother's dress. She made that dress on her wedding day 25 years prior. They got married uh, also in June, not the same exact date. But what's really interesting about this particular day is that the person that married my husband and I also married my parents 25 years prior to that. So um, just a wonderful picture that brings up memories of my fantastic husband and my loving family. That is a big part of my life. This is me and that guy scuba diving. Yeah, we love to take adventures together. Uh, we got certified to scuba dive a couple years after we got married. Um, so that's us. I believe we are in, actually in um, Mexico uh, around the island of Cozumel. So that might be a, a year or two after we got married. Let's see. This was actually on our honeymoon. Um, I got to swim with the dolphins and it was so amazing. Like that. That laugh right there, that I got a kiss from the dolphins. I mean, what what's better than that? You know what I mean? So the joy that you can you can get out of life just by um, you know going with the flow and uh, doing what makes you happy. 
I'm very short, so I uh, have to climb up on things. My husband thinks it's hilarious, uh, so I had to get something up there to do a little cooking. And uh, when I cook, especially if I chop onions, I wear goggles because they make me cry. <laughs> they make me so sad. <laughs> so uh, that is me cooking. My husband's actually the chef. He's a better cook than I am, but I do cook once in a while. Uh, I also learned to play the drums. Um, didn't really get to do it in a band, but I, I have played all of these instruments that you'll see on the wall, including the keyboard um, and the bongos and the congos and the drums. And I'm pretty good. I'm all right. This was all self-taught. These I did take lessons for and have been playing for years. I even uh, was in a band and created my own music. I have a few original songs. So there's me right after medical school with my band, just singing a little in indie pop song for my uh, for my audience, barefoot, of course. I love astrology and astronomy. Um, so that's a full moon uh, right after sunset. I just thought, wow, that's, I love those perspective pictures where you can like grab the sun or, you know, kind of put it in your mouth. <clears throat> that's me looking at the 2017 uh, partial solar eclipse with my husband's welding helmet. Let's see. I uh, also used to love to do races, half marathons. I did probably about, I don't know, maybe a dozen in my lifetime. They've gotten a little harder as I've gotten older, a little bit harder in the joints, but uh, I would get everything ready and I would uh, go. This was San, uh, Austin. Yeah, Austin. That Austin half marathon is horrible. That last mile is straight uphill. So when you're after you're done running 12 miles, ugh, then you have to go up this like 30 degree incline. It's it was I've never heard so many F-bombs in my life. This is me and my dad finishing that race. And that's my uh, my little cousin or my little nephew right there, Colin. He's older now. But that's me and my dad crossing the finish line together. We also like to kite surf. Uh, we did this for about seven, eight years. That's me taking a nice uh, gnarly jump with my kite. Um, there's a lagoon not too far from where we live with nice flat water. And when the winds are between 18 and 20 miles an hour, you just put up this kite that's about, you know, eight to 10 meters in size, blow it up, send it up in the air. And it, it just takes you across the water, kind of like wakeboarding, but you use the wind to help you uh, surf. So that's fun. And then you can also kite on the snow. <clears throat> so we did that. We went to Colorado where my family lives and uh, did a little uh, snow kiting. So, and then this is my newest craze. This is what I do. This is what I'm going to do after I'm finished recording this video. Actually, I'm going to go out and uh, go riding on my wheel. So that's a little bit about my life. That's my unique journey, my uh, the expression of my unique self. I don't uh, tend to do what everybody else does. You know, I'm probably the only 50 year old that's cruising around the neighborhood on one of these things. But, you know, that's kind of what we do. That's that's how we express ourselves in our life. And then this is the uh, graphic I just created through, for this. So, um, all right, so what do you say we go through the houses? I actually have an email here that I sent myself that I'm gonna read to you guys. That way I can look straight at you when we do it. All right. Oh, guys, too, also in the links below, I'm gonna leave you a very detailed analysis of Uranus and Jupiter together. My colleagues, uh, Michael Hartigan and Maria Schumacher uh, did a nice hour long conversation on this particular conjunction. They're both brilliant astrologers. I'm gonna leave a link to Michael's YouTube channel. Uh, I want you to go there, check out their analysis. Um, give them a thumbs up and subscribe to that channel if you're not. Uh, they are both brilliant. I'm actually going to try to get Maria to come on and talk with us a little bit, uh, probably late May, early June about some special energies that are coming for us too. So, <clears throat> all right. So the way that you guys want to do this, um, I have a free chart calculator on my website. Uh, it is powered by Mastering the Zodiac with Athen Comenti. We appreciate that code on there so that we can get more people into constellational astrology. I'll leave a link down there below. What I want you to do is go click on that link, put in your birthday and birth time, okay? Time's very important, and location. Then I want you to look for where you see the symbols of Jupiter and Uranus and whatever the inner ring says, whatever number that is, is the house that you're looking for. OK, now, if you look on your natal chart, if Jupiter is in, say, the 10th house or if Uranus is in your fifth house, you can also listen to uh, those readings as well. So without further ado, let's get going. So 
First house people, here we go. <clears throat> um, all right. So if you have Jupiter and Uranus conjunct together right now, transiting through your first house, this is the house of the self. This is the ascendant. This is how you present yourself to the world. Now, what you might be going through is a complete inner and outer makeover. When you run into someone you haven't seen in a while, they are probably going to be amazed. You'll look taller. Your hair will be different. You'll have lost weight. Your whole presence will be just more magnificent, more powerful, more original, and more you. And it's going to feel really, really good to be sitting in that space because something has intrinsically been changing inside of you over the last few weeks and months. People are listening and respecting your opinion more. Uh, people are going to consider your crazy ideas seriously. So believe it or not, you have just been coronated as royalty with this energy moving through your first house. Enjoy this new you. Enjoy this new power. But also be careful not to abuse this gift and use it for good. All right. Second house. If you have Jupiter and Uranus transiting th conjunct through your second house right now, this is the house of money, values, property, and self-worth. This is an auspicious place to have both Uranus and Jupiter conjunct and transiting. If you have this natally, extra bonus. Large sums of money, quickly and easily from multiple sources in increasing amounts are going to be coming at you. This is literally an abundance transit. New ways to spend, new things to buy, new ways to circulate money, and new ways to build wealth. If you're not keen on money, learn about it. Learn everything you can. Watch the markets, read the financial news, look into the new and emerging markets. You're going to have a creative surge on how it all works and unique and new ideas on how to leverage these current and remarkable trends to benefit you and those you hold dear. So money is good is your new mantra if you are not already there. All right. Third house. If you have Jupiter and Uranus conjunct and transiting through your third house, this is the house of the mind, communication, and your local community. With the recent Mercury retrograde, your mind has probably been on fire. You are assimilating and learning new ideas at an alarming rate. This conjunction in your third house is guiding you to speak, to write, to record, to document this information in any and every way possible. You might be inspired to work with your local community co-workers or friends to bring your ideas into realities. Don't worry right now if you get the information wrong or someone else has a better idea than you. Welcome it. Work with it. Work with other people. Your abilities as a channel may also be blossoming. So those of you that are connecting into the spirit realm, connecting into other uh, ben benef benefic entities, spirit guides, angels, you are not crazy. This is actually a phenomenon that's happening all over the world right now. So transmit Receive and start now. Okay, fourth house. If you have Jupiter and Uranus transiting your fourth house right now, this is the house of the soul. This is the house of your ancestors. This is the house of your roots. There's an expansive internal metamorphosis going on for you right now, deep at the heart of who you are. This may manifest in unexpected ways around your home and around your family. An unexpected but beneficial move could be in the cards for you. And at first, it might not seem wonderful, but it actually is. You're used to what you know, and this expansion is necessary for your spiritual evolution and growth. So try to consciously tap into this unconscious internal process that's happening for you. Let your spirit, let your higher self, let your soul guide you and trust your gut. Okay. Fifth house. The fifth house. If you have Uranus and Jupiter transiting through your natal fifth house right now, this is the house of expression, joy, romance, and children. Something unexpected is going to grab your heart during this transit, and it's going to fill you with a renewed sense of wonder and excitement. It could be as simple as a new hobby or interest that you start geeking out on. Or it could be as big as a new crush or even a new baby. Something that is wonderful, that consumes all of your time in the beginning because it elates you so much. But remember, all ecstatic things come to an end and that is why they call it a crush. But just try to enjoy the moment. 
and let it revitalize your big, luscious, wonderful heart. The sixth house. If you have Jupiter and Uranus transiting your sixth house, this is the house of service, the house of the house of health and the house of your work. If you're struggling with health issues at the moment, something miraculous might be on the way. There feels like a breath of fresh air and an otherwise stale and decaying energy. Routines are busted up, making room for something new. You might be, feel, might be feeling called to make a change in what you do every single day. Change your workout routine, change your spiritual routine, change who you say yes to. This is a pattern break time for those of you that love routine. It might feel a little bit uncomfortable at first, but then it's going to feel amazing. And so many things are going to open up for you. The seventh house. If you have Jupiter and Uranus transiting through your seventh house, this is the house of relationships and partnerships. Right now, it might feel like everyone wants you. Everyone wants to be around you. Everyone wants to work with you. You're probably swatting away all the prospects. Like, no, I just can't. There's, I don't have enough time to do any of this. The recent eclipse we had likely changed your, perspe your perspectives. And that is the result, this magnetism that you have. So whatever was changed during that eclipse is rippling outward now. And people are getting a clue about how amazing you are. You get this, you get to call the shots now. And there's a wonderful freedom in that. So what turns you on? What gets you excited? Gives you a faith that there's a purpose in this universe? Ask yourself these questions before you decide on any of the offers that you're getting and don't rush into any decisions. Love yourself first and foremost because no one owns you anymore or ever. All right, the eighth house. If you have Jupiter and Uranus transiting through your eighth house, this is the house of transformation, of sex, death, and the flow of money. I think some sort of chaos is gonna be coming for you. Chaos can be so difficult and stressful, especially unexpected chaos. But conscious change is the name of the game here, conscious change. Try not to get too emotionally attached to that which is unexpectedly leaving your field. And likewise, don't begrudge what is entering unexpectedly. This could be an unexpected pregnancy, the loss of a mentor, either through death or circumstance. The tendency might be to overthink it or personalize it. But remember here, with chaos and change, there's an opportunity, a powerful opportunity for personal growth and transformation. The ninth house. If you have Jupiter and Uranus transiting through your ninth house right now, this is the house, house of faith, wisdom, and belief. And it's Jupiter's house. Jupiter rules the ninth house. Your core and foundational beliefs have been going through a pattern break. Maybe you no longer need to go to church to practice your faith. Maybe you no longer need school as it's getting in the way of your true education. Perhaps it's time for a pilgrimage, a spiritual retreat, a sabbatical, a deep and profound experience in a place and situation where all you do is learn and soak it in. There's something bigger than you out there, and you long to experience this. It might also be time for you to step into the role of teacher, mentor, or true philosopher. Go on the quest. The truth lies there. The 10th house. If you have Jupiter and Uranus transiting through your 10th house right now, this is the house of your public life and career. Things are about to get dramatically different in your workspace. If you haven't been feeling the need for change approaching, you're about to acutely feel this, okay? Now is the time to dream big. Think outside of the box. Don't be afraid to step away from that which is no longer working. And don't be afraid to step into something new that excites you. People would rather see you living in lockstep with your passion than sacrificing your time and talent on lifeless and worn out concepts. Get your blood pumping, take charge, and go for it. <clears throat> the 11th house. If you have Jupiter and Uranus transiting through your 11th house, this is the house of groups, of friends, of the love you receive. During this transit, you might find your group of friends or your role within an existing community changing for the better. What you have to offer has actually leveled up. You're no longer settling for victim mentality, 
groupthink, or any kind of low vibe energy. You, you're seeking the promise of a better tomorrow because you absolutely believe that it is possible and you're ready. You have so much to give and, con and contribute, but you also have so much to gain. Open up yourself to new connections and new responsibilities. It's an exciting time of change and you are ready. The 12th house. This is my house. <laughs> if you have Jupiter and Uranus transiting through your 12th house, this is the house of solitude. This conjunction is a wonderful breath of fresh air, even for those of you with this in your 12th house. If you can escape, meditate, call in sick, postpone your plans during this transit, you will find a secret freedom and a secret escape, almost as if you are walking hand in hand with spirit. A mental dream vacation built just for you, a luxurious time of private revelations and internal revolutions. Use this time to imagine your perfect life, the life that you deserve. See it, smell it, taste it, feel it in your mind's eye. Once this transit's over, it will be a time for action. But for now, just revel in the secret glory and the power that you possess. All right, my friends, that's the end of these transits. Uh, please stay tuned for the uh, full moon reading coming up. Join the Fellowship of 13 Signs. Follow me on Facebook, and I hope you all have a wonderful week. Namaste, my friends.